Welcome to the Literary Lounge. I'm Paige. And I'm Emily. And we are your hosts where we talk about all things books and we drink our favorite drinks that are related to the books. Today we are talking about It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. And we're drinking a flower shop mule. Yes, our flower shop mule is themed to It Ends With Us and it has infused lavender vodka in it with some lime and diet ginger beer. If you want to get this recipe, go check it out on our Instagram. We have it posted. Yep. And so we are going to be having an episode every Wednesday for you guys where we talk about different books. Um, We'll definitely be spoiling throughout them. So if you haven't read It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, this is your cue to hop off and then join us again once you've read it. Just a little bit about us, I guess. We can share how we've met. So we've been friends for probably like 10 plus years, 12 years. Yeah, about that. Yeah. Since high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we've, we like to travel together. We've um, actually worked together in high school. We worked for a meal replacement shake shop. MLM for the win. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I always think about like when we would sit there when it was slow at work and we would watch One Direction videos and talk about which one we were going to marry. Yeah. We also went to the concert together. Oh yeah. We did do that. <laughs> Yeah, I really wanted to marry Zane, but then I kind of converted to a hairy girl. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> I always wanted to marry Louie, and I'm not really sure why. He's he's the one that we don't, like, hear about anymore. I don't like him. I don't know what happened to him. He seems but nice, though. But I, he's he not. has a nice face. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, also, by the way, like, we're not MLM supporters. We own two of our own businesses Mm -hmm. small business shop small yeah anyway should we start talking about this book yeah let's do it all right let's dive in first we want to give you a trigger warning on this so this book does have uh several instances of domestic violence so we actually wanted to share a hotline with you all the national hotline number is 800-799-7233 or you can text START to 88788. And we'll also include this on our episode description as well. Um, if you or if there's anybody that you know or care about is going through a um, domestic violence situation. So let's start out by walking through what happened in like about the first half of the book. So it starts out with 23-year-old Lily. She meets Ryle on the rooftop of a building in Boston and she just returned from her dad's funeral. She's sitting on the rooftop and a man walks in or on (laughs) on the rooftop and starts like kicking furniture around, um, kind of having a meltdown, and he doesn't know she's there. But they eventually meet. They have some pretty deep conversations with their version of like naked truths. That's their little yeah. They like tell each other I don't know kind of secrets about themselves. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you. So if you were in Lily's position, like what would your immediate thoughts be like when you see a man walking up? kicking furniture while you're alone on a rooftop um I guess when you put it that way (laughs) (laughs) well that's how she was yeah that's true I I guess when you put the part about oh she's alone on a roof with a man she doesn't know I would definitely like I think my skin would like prick up a little bit like but it's not even a man that she doesn't know he's literally like angry destructing property yeah trying to I suppose um I would say that kicking furniture isn't necessarily a red flag to me I mean He's just, got anger issues, though. Yeah. Just from that. Yeah, but I don't know. Getting frustrated at inanimate objects, to me, isn't the common. end of the world. Um, but, I I mean, just being alone up there. And it's not even the building that she lives in. So, definitely, she should like be on her guard. But um, my first impression of him, I just was really bothered by how cocky he is. Yes, he's very cocky. But he's described as this... I mean, he probably has good reason to be cocky. He's a he's a neurosurgeon. We find out he's described as this gorgeous, muscular man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, hot doctor. Yeah. So, yeah. So they talk for a while, then they kind of go their separate ways. Lily has this aspiration to become a flower shop owner, so she finally lives up to that dream. I think she's twenty three, right? Yeah, she's young. 
Yeah, so she starts her own business and she just bought the building and this woman walks into her building and asks if she's hiring. Well, we find out that this woman who walks in is Alyssa and that's actually Ryle's sister. And I think this is six months later after the top of the building, correct? Right, something like that. It's been a little while, um, but long story short, Alyssa's young she's filthy rich and she's bored she's looking for something to do and she sees a help wanted sign yeah and they quickly become good friends Mm -hmm. so they start so she gets hired and they start um, working on the building and lily steps up on these like crates and she falls and twists her ankle while Alyssa comes to help and she said, oh, I'll, I'll call my friend or my brother or husband. I don't know. I think she I said husband. Her, her but doctor brother. Yeah. So they show up and it ends up being Ryle. And Lily is a little surprised at this, but they kind of pretend to not know each other. And he helps her. They start to develop these feelings for each other over a very short time. Yeah, I think they're both trying to deny it. At first, I mean, he straight up tells her he doesn't want a relationship, like, doesn't believe in marriage and children, which is fine. Like, that's not everybody's thing. Um, But it seems a little bit different than maybe what she might be looking for in somebody. But then he keeps just showing up at her doorstep. Like, he's literally begging her to have sex with him on his knees. A little cringe. Yeah. It's, (laughs) like, not trying to yuck anybody's yum, but to me that was, like, a little excessive. He just seems like he has a really extreme personality. Like, I think he would be really exhausting to be around, in my opinion. Um, but she, she's she got strong feelings for him, and eventually they just give in to their, to their fighting, and they decide that they want to be a couple. So once they're a couple, they go to dinner with Lily's mom at this new restaurant in the neighborhood. And the owner of this restaurant is, well, actually, sorry, we don't know that he's the owner yet. Um, he is a waiter and he ends up being Lily's childhood love and she pretends not to know him obviously because she's with Ryle and she doesn't want to have any thing come up from that but while they meet or while he sees her or while she sees him at this restaurant it reminds her of these letters that she used to write to Ellen DeGeneres as like her diary entries Mm -hmm. and she kind of digs them up and starts reading through through them and during these entries we find out that Lily grew up in an abusive household Lily's dad abused her mom and Atlas he was kind of he was technically abused by his mom too yeah he had like a tough childhood as well which I don't think we really hear about that too much in this book Um, but we know for a fact that he's been kicked out he's homeless he's living in the house next door to Lily And so through her diary entries to Ellen, she talks about how she starts helping Atlas because, you know, she feels sorry for him. She's got a good heart. Um, But eventually they start to develop stronger feelings for each other because she's going through all that with like her dad abusing her mom. And then he's, you know, just trying to find his way. He doesn't have anywhere to go. And so they're they kind of like develop a safe haven between the two of them. They hang out a lot during this time and they eventually like start to develop feelings for each other. He kind of finds out that he is going to Boston to live with his uncle and Lily is obviously like upset about that, but she's happy for him that he won't be homeless anymore. So he eventually leaves and he returns on her 16th birthday and gives her a boston magnet and then they end up actually having sex and lily's father finds atlas in the bedroom and beats him like enough that the ambulance had to be called and he was put in the hospital so they both promise to find each other again later on in life when atlas claims and thinks that he's ready to be with lily why do you think that lily helped atlas when they were children i mean i think she's just a good person she always has been and so Seeing somebody next door that doesn't have the same things that she has, I think she just wanted to help him. And none of the other children in their school, at least the ones that she surrounded herself with, wanted to help him. They all thought he was gross and he smelled bad. And why do you think she continued to help him after the people at school found out that she was helping him? 
I think because she knew him, who he was as a person, yeah. and because they had a friendship by that point, too, when yeah. people started. Actually, they were kind of together when people found out. True. Um, So she was just kind of like, fuck you all. Like, she started to like them, and she realized, I think, that those people that she was surrounding herself with weren't really positive and good people to surround herself with if they couldn't even help someone who needed help so right but so that's kind of the gist of their childhood together that's really all that we're given with the ellen letters um but so they go to the restaurant her ryle and her mom present day um and like Paige said she notices that their waiter is actually atlas from her childhood and she um pretends that she doesn't know him they do end up bumping into each other at the end of the night um and she tells him that she's dating Ryle. He tells her he has a girlfriend, which we learn later on is actually not true. Um, and so that kind of, I think, is how she starts rereading these diary entries. Is she's like, I haven't seen this guy in so long. And, like, is looking back on all that stuff that they went through. So we as readers are, like, finding all this out, like, as we go throughout the book each time she opens a new diary entry. Did you like that? writing style for introducing their relationship back in time Mm -hmm. I thought it was cute yeah I thought it was a little cringy I guess because of the Ellen DeGeneres aspect of it um it would have been nice to see their relationship play out kind of in like not like like real time kind of like it's an actual like a few chapters of it Mm -hmm. um and then jump ahead but I guess I, it is cute. I just think that Ellen DeGeneres and the constant Finding Nemo <laughs> things are a little, yeah. a little cringe. Yeah. Kind of is creative, though, for sure. Well, maybe we can move on then to kind of when things go south. So they're living in this fantasy world, Ryle and Lily, um, until one day when they're like she's had a couple glasses of wine. They're cooking dinner and Ryle, without thinking, reaches into the oven and tries to pull out their dinner, and he burns his hand. And her being, like, shocked and not really, like, expecting this to happen kind of laughs. And I th- I think that's – a lot of people react kind of oddly to, like, things that they're not expecting, and that's exactly what she does. And he is pissed, and he, like, hits her. Yeah, so he, she's, he pushed her down. Yeah, as she's, like, falling, she bangs her head on, like, the side of the counter or, like, cabinet hardware or something. And he's super angry with her and she's like in utter shock because she never thought like in a million years that he would do this, let alone that she would ever have something like that happen to her. But she kind of ends up forgiving him for it. Do you think that was the right decision for her? Um, no. I guess like (laughs) at this point in the book, did you think he could do it again? I feel like if you're capable of it, like it's very possible that it could happen again. That is true. But he was very apologetic after, and I understand that that's very common in domestic violence cases, but it kind of puts you into that position that, like, oh, like, maybe he wouldn't do it again, like, especially since she thought, like, he would never do anything like that. So it kind of gives us, like, a a sense of, like, putting ourselves into that situation, and I don't know, like, from the outside, it's so easy to just say leave, but it kind of starts putting us into that space where it's not so easy to leave. I don't know. I guess that's where I was at during it. Right. Yeah. That's like the thing about being in her head in this book is you really see like what she's going through and the back and forth she has with herself. Um, But she straight up tells him like, you touch me again. Like I'm leaving you. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah, for sure. After she hit her head, they went to that same restaurant that her and her mom went to because it was really good. And Lily was trying to talk Ryle and Alyssa into not going there because of Atlas being there. Well, they go there and Atlas notices the mark on her forehead and she goes to the bathroom and Atlas follows her into the bathroom and asks her like what happened and she's kind of reluctant to tell him. But eventually she says like she just fell I think and she's trying to get away and she opens the door and Ryle sees her and Atlas in the bathroom together while Ryle and Atlas break into this huge fight and they end up leaving while Atlas gives Lily his phone number and puts it like 
under her, like in the back of her phone case so she can use it for later if there's ever an emergency. Well, later on in the book, Ryle finds that phone number in her phone case and that's kind of where the second incident starts. And he leaves the apartment and heads down the stairs. Lily chases after him and tries to like get him to come back while he ends up pushing her down the stairs and she blacks out. And she wakes up in her bed kind of confused and is coming to terms with what actually happened. She realizes, like, Ryle, you pushed me down the stairs. And then he's kind of, like, gaslighting her and saying, no, Lily, you fell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she is ready to leave him after this incident. Like, that's the second time she said that she would leave and she's full ready to do so. Um, But that's when Alyssa gets involved and she tells Ryle that he needs to fill her in on their past how when he was a kid he accidentally shot their brother Emerson with a gun I think he was six years old when that happened yeah they were really little and so it was an accident um but since then he's dealt with like PTSD and a lot of other like anger disorders and like he has a lot of issues like over that yeah he claims he blacks out when he gets angry and Trauma affects everyone differently, and I I totally, like, believe him when he says that he does blackout during this. Like, that's just how this trauma has affected him. He says he gets therapy. I think he should maybe find a new therapist or get extra help. There's so much help out there that you can have if you look for it and find those resources. I'm thinking he has a little PTSD from it, obviously. So yeah, there's so many resources out there that you can use to get through these traumatic events. But what do you think about that? Do you think Ryle's traumatic event excused his behavior? Um, no. I mean, I get that he has a lot he's going through, but at this point, I just don't think that it makes sense for her to stay with him. He obviously has some real things that he needs to work through and he's not safe to be around, let alone like be living with, which they do move in together like literally after this happens or maybe they were already living together. But um, there's a lot of things that he needs to deal with. He's not in the right headspace to be in a relationship. I agree. And like this whole incident that happened to him as a kid, like that really kind of tugs on your heartstrings. And Mm -hmm. I have like come to like love Ryle in this story. But I also agree she should not stay with him because, I mean, things so far, like the incidents have gotten worse and worse. Like first she just fell in her kitchen. Second, he pushed her down down the stairs. Like what's going to be next? Like could she be killed next? Like you never know. Like that's too scary. And like as for like excusing his behavior, no, I don't think it excuses his behavior. But I, I don't think he's a bad person because of it. He did go through this traumatic event. And he very clearly needs help. But yeah, I, I don't think it excuses it. That's kind of like ask, like if someone killed someone, but they have some traumatic event that had happened. And mm-hmm. like, oh, did that excuse his behavior? No. Not, right. Not really. <laughs> yeah. So and again, in this situation, like she's really like going through it, trying to figure out what to do. Um, But she does end up staying with him. They do get married not long after this, and they're living together. They go the Vegas route and just do, like, a quick wedding um, out of the blue, which then, not long after, they have their third incident um, where he is home one day, and she's at work or somewhere else, and he finds all of her letters to Ellen and then finds out, like, what the Boston magnet means, what the heart means tattoo on her shoulder means which is where atlas used to kiss her all the time so he's like blind with rage and is um it's just tough to say but like is about to rape her basically when she gets home and putting her in a really compromising position and he ends up headbutting her in bed and she's knocked out i think that this is when we notice a big change in these events Because for the first two events, they're so easy to be like, oh, he blacked out. He he didn't mean to push like he just reacted and he didn't mean to hurt her. But this this event, this third event, he was intentionally trying to hurt her. Mm -hmm. He he didn't just turn around and push her. 
like the other two instances like he was really trying to hurt her like he bit her heart tattoo Mm -hmm. pushed her on the bed tried to rape her she like lifted up her head and he headbutted her and knocked her out and then after she woke up he was pissed at her still yeah well he was very apologetic at the same time because she was literally unconscious well yeah but like he was still mad yeah what it i just don't get it those are journals that are from her childhood like you're really that insecure with yourself that you don't trust your partner yeah and you feel that you're man enough that to hurt her i just i don't get it yeah thankfully though she's done like that was the final straw um and she leaves because she she realizes that like this is not gonna work like he can't get his shit together she leaves and she actually still has atlas's number memorized and he meets her outside and takes her to the hospital well at the hospital things take a huge turn and she is pregnant with ryle's child well, before this, she was so sure that she was going to leave Ryle, but, like, now adding a child into it, that kind of clouds up her decision. She talks a lot about, like, how she's grieving him because the at, or the Ryle that she thought that she married isn't really who he is after all or who he's showing it's her like that he, he is. It's like he died. Yeah, yes. she talks about how it's, like, a death, and so I think there's just a lot going through her head, like, She's trying to figure all that out, and she's grieving the thought that he can't be the father that she maybe thought he was going to be one day, like they were going to be this little happy family when they started having kids, and like nothing is what she thought it was going to be. She's just really like going through it at this point. It's very sad. She is a very strong woman for having the strength to leave. Mm -hmm. that's not always the case so after their visit to the hospital then atlas takes lily to his house to keep her safe there ryle Alyssa, nobody is aware of where she's ran off to and she hangs out there for a few days they kind of have a chance to reconnect and just like talk about all the things that i think were kind of like looming over them all these years but by any means like they're not like trying to get back together like she's got way too much going on at this point yeah um but i think it's nice for her to have a friend in this situation which then she learns that ryle's gonna be out of the country for like a couple months how convenient i don't know like how many like victims of domestic violence like get to go home to an empty house exactly it's not not exactly like a realistic situation but good for her like she gets to go home and go through her pregnancy knowing that she's safe like he's out of the country um, and so she's getting to the point where she has to tell people. And so she tells Alyssa, well, she still doesn't know that her and Ryle aren't together anymore. So it's kind of just this big secret. He doesn't know she's pregnant. Like, there's all these secrets, like, yeah. going on that um, everything's about to blow up eventually. But when Ryle gets home, it's very obvious that there's a baby in her stomach because she's, like, six months pregnant. And he just, like, looks at her like, well, that's a baby. You can read the hurt on his face from yeah. the way that she describes it. Yeah. So Lily is still living in that apartment and Ryle, I am assuming, is living with Alyssa. Mm-hmm. And so Ryle kind of helps out through the pregnancy by like building the crib and doing all those things that a father typically does. Yeah. She kind of keeps him at arm's length. And he he wants to get back together, and she's like, I just can't right now. We yeah. can't talk about this, like, one big life change at a time. Yes, she doesn't want to make this decision while she's popped up on pregnancy hormones, you know. So mm-hmm. not much really happens until she gives birth. She gives birth, and that is the moment that she decides is a great time to tell Ryle that she wants a divorce and it's a pretty heart-wrenching time even for the reader. Ryle is kind of taken aback by it but she has to further explain why she wants this divorce and she does that by getting him in a headspace where he could be put into the position with his daughter and she asks him, Ryle, what would you do if your daughter come came home and said my husband beat me? And he kind of starts breaking down at that point and asks her to stop. And she takes it further and asks, Ryle, what would you do if your daughter comes home and says, Daddy, my husband raped me? 
And that's like when he finally broke and was, I would tell my daughter to leave him and never turn back. So that's when he kind of understood, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually kind of shocked that she like took it to that extreme, like the minute her daughter came into this world, because there's a lot of emotions happening here. And with him being such a wild card, like, I, I get exactly why she did it in that moment because, like, her daughter was born and she was like, it's not about my safety anymore, not just me. It's, like, about my daughter and I need to protect her and cut this cord, like, literally. And, but he's crazy. Like, wouldn't you worry that he would, like, lash out, like, in the delivery room? Uh, I don't think in a public space around people because he's never done it in a public space before. Mm -hmm. Besides towards Atlas, I mean, they got in a fight in the restaurant, but I think it was kind of in the back so no one probably really saw except the employees yeah but no I I think that was the perfect time to do it just because yes they were like in kind of in a public setting I mean they had nurses and stuff around and he works in a hospital too so he's probably gonna be on his best behavior oh yeah for sure doesn't <laughs> want that getting back to his co-workers yeah so she tells them they want it she wants a divorce and so they get a divorce and Six months later, it kind of jumps ahead, and Lily is going to make the exchange with Ryle so he can have Emerson for the day, and she runs into Atlas outside. Again, how convenient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they kind of catch up for a very brief time, and then they go their separate ways, and Lily hands off Emerson to Ryle. Well, Lily runs back down the street to find Atlas. Just to tell him this little girl's special middle name, which is Dory Ugh. from Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> and they, yeah, they kind of rekindle a little bit. And Atlas says to her as he's hugging her, you can stop swimming, Lily. We finally have reached the shore. And that's <laughs> how it ends. Yeah. Leading us to believe that they might rekindle their situation. Yeah. Overall, it was a, it was an okay book. I mean, I loved it the first time. Oh, I think we forgot to mention, we read it twice each. Mm -hmm. So the first time, I was absolutely head over heels for it. I was telling everyone I knew to read it. Um, the second time, I definitely picked up a lot of different things that were a little more cringy to me and just more details in the story that I didn't really catch the first time. Did you um, like Ryle in the beginning? The first um, time. Let's go with the first time. Yeah, the it. first time. No, I've never liked him. Um, like I said earlier, like his personality, I just find to be like very overbearing. He's, he's extreme, like on every level. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've just, I didn't really see anything like exciting about him either time that I read this book. I really didn't like him the second time, obviously, knowing what he does. And then, yeah. like, I think when you know that he has, like, abusive tendencies, then, like, in the beginning with, like, we were talking about, like, when he kicks the chair, like, the first time we read that, did you think that that was, like, a sign of violence, right? Like, you're kind of looking for that stuff the second time around because you know that he's like that. So, he's like, oh, he kicks chairs. Like, he's psycho. Like, he's yeah. going to hit her. That's very like, true because, no, I don't think I did. Yeah, isn't that crazy that, like, sometimes you notice things when you read stuff for the second time, you're like, oh, that was kind of hinting at that, yeah. Yeah, I, for the first time, I loved Ryle. Like, mm -hmm. he was exactly, like, my type, and I I really liked him. Um, I thought they were moving very, very fast, but yeah. then again, I'm also a firm believer, like, when you know, you know, mm -hmm. so I guess I don't really have too much to say about how fast they moved. At what point in the book did you, like, see Ryle as a red flag the first time you read um, it? I mean, well, as I was saying, like, his behavior was – I didn't see it as a red flag. I just didn't particularly like him. So I think, obviously, the first incident where he hits her or pushes her out of the way from the oven scene is obviously, like, okay, he's abusive. Like, I think that was the first no time that I noticed that, like, that's how he was. What about you? Yeah, I'd probably stay at that too because all the other times, like, he was just head over heels for her. There was no really, there wasn't really any red flags besides that. I mean, for the second time, looking at the chair incident in the beginning, mm -hmm. I could kind of see that being one, just knowing how he is, though. Yeah. 
So I would, yeah, I'd probably say the first incident when he grabs the pan and burns his hand. Later on in the book, Ryle tells Lily that there's no such thing as bad people. We're all just people who sometimes do bad things. Do you agree with that? Or what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't agree with that, but I've been, I've been thinking about that quote a lot. Like, I do think that there are bad people out there, but where that line is drawn is so blurry, depending on who you ask. I think, like, majority of us would agree that, like, if you've murdered somebody before, if you've hit somebody that, anybody, you've hit anybody, like, you're a bad person, right? Like, those are bad things, especially murder, rape, whatever, like, I don't think that there's any doubt that those are bad things, but there are certain things that people do, mistakes people make that are kind of gray area. Like, I don't know, for example, like some people might say that like somebody who has had an abortion is a bad person, whereas like somebody else would say, no, they're not a bad person. So there's just like a lot of things that people like have opinions on. So it's kind of like where does the where's the line drawn and it it's just opinion based so for me personally like do I think Ryle's a bad person yes I think he's a bad person but like there's so many different instances we could bring up where like you might say oh that's a bad person or I'd be like no that's not a bad person do you know what I'm trying to say I do um I kind of have something to counter that a little bit so I know we me and you discussed aside that we were watching that HBO um documentary called crazy not insane Mm -hmm. and that just kind of goes over like how murderers aren't born they're created Mm -hmm. so like knowing that ryle had this very traumatic incident that definitely like messes with him mentally and Mm -hmm. he has a lot of trauma and like how he he says that he blacks out like when he gets mad do you think he's a bad person because he has that PTSD like that mental disorder that's causing him to do all this right that's like gray area because it's like he's doing bad things so but would he be doing that like if he hadn't gone through that incident exactly so does that make him a bad person yeah that's very true (laughs) um yes (laughs) (laughs) see I don't I don't think he that makes him a bad person um I just think he needs the help to yeah he definitely needs help I think there are moments, you know, he could have a redemption moment in the future if he gets the real help that he needs, finds the right therapist, finds the right doctors. I don't know what it takes to, like, get yourself out of these situations when you've gone so far, but, you know, we can always, like, do better. True. Everyone can always do better. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Atlas and Lily's relationship versus Ryle and Lily's relationship. What do you think the similarities and the differences are? Um, I think for Atlas and Lily, they were really like each other's safe place because they both were going through something like very traumatic. And so that the fact that they had each other, I think, helped develop like the love they had for each other. Um, had they not been going through those things, would they still have had a connection? Maybe. We would never know. Um, But they seemed like they were really good together. Like, they made each other better, I think. Um, Whereas, like, Ryle and Lily, if we ignore the abuse side of things, like, before she found out that he was like this, I think he was, like, a fun, fresh new thing for her. Like, she was starting her new business. He had all these great things going for him. She was really tight with his sister. Like, everything was, like, perfect, and she was just having, like, a great time like they were always hanging out with Marshall and Alyssa and like she was just living it up in her 20s basically what are your thoughts on like Lily's letters to Ellen I know we kind of touched on this earlier and but you were a fan of the storytelling method yeah I thought it was cute I don't yeah. know kind of different I I would have liked to have seen actual like chapters instead of yeah more like a chapter that's like eight years earlier or whatever yeah gotcha all right, let's kind of, like, go over, like, the stigma around domestic violence. Mm-hmm. What do you think that is? Well, I think this book definitely, at least for Lily, and a lot of readers are learning that it's not so easy to just leave. Like, she was getting so frustrated with her mom during her younger years that her mom would never leave her dad. She just kept 
coming back and taking the abuse. And, and Lily didn't understand why. And yeah. then I think having gone through it herself, there we see so much of like her back and forth or like the first time that he hurts her she actually is like blaming herself in the situation like it's really not that easy to just walk away like there's a lot of different factors going into play when victims of assault are trying to decide what what's the right decision for them and their family I think it's very interesting that Lily growing up always said like why doesn't she just leave him like it's it she thought it was very simple And how interesting it is that she went through it as well. And even when she was grown up before she met Ryle, she still kind of like resented her mom in that way. Like, why didn't she ever just leave my dad? Like, Mm -hmm. my life could have probably been way better than it was growing up if she just would have left. But then after going through it with Ryle, she I think she developed this like stronger love for her mom because now she finally understands like it's fucking hard. Like, yeah, like you love this person like they're your whole life. And I'm, I'm happy that she was able to finally come to terms with that. And she probably had a little closure with her childhood because of that. Um, and doesn't, I'm assuming, hold this resentment towards her mom anymore. now that she finally probably understands that it's really, it's not easy to leave. Yeah. That just reminded me, do you remember in the book where, um, like, at, I think it's near the very end where her and her mom are, she's telling her mom about ryle and Mm -hmm. and they have this like moment where they like appreciate each other and she goes mom i want to be you when i grow up yeah because her mom says that to her in the beginning when she starts her own flower shop Mm -hmm. mom's like i want to be you when i grow up and then it's like it's like a full circle moment and i I think during that same same conversation too she lets her know that she knew exactly what she was doing when at her father's funeral during her eulogy Oh, yeah. She didn't say anything. She's like, Lily, I knew what you were doing, and I was so proud of you in that moment. Mm -hmm. That made me cry. (laughs) I was so so happy and sad, and that just, that gave me all the feels. Yeah. So, what are your final thoughts over this book? Um, I still like it. I think I gave it, like, a five stars on Goodreads the first time I read it. I would give it a four now if I were to change my rating. Just because some of the things feel a little bit unrealistic to me, like how filthy rich like her friends are in their early 20s. Yeah, that's very unrealistic. Yeah, and it was bugging me how Alyssa and Lily kept joking like, oh, you have people for that. Like, they just, the whole rich lifestyle was a little bit off-putting to me. So that kind of bothered me. And like we were saying how she like goes back to an empty, empty house. Like, it's like, okay. You know, it just wasn't super realistic, but I think the realistic part of this book is what she's going through in her head. True. Yeah. And going back on that, like how unrealistic it is, like I mentioned earlier, like we're both small business owners. Like she opened that business so easily. Like Mm -hmm. she had no issues with that. It is not that easy. Like only opening a small business it's so hard. Like there's so much that goes into it. It's not just like you snap your fingers and it's done. Like there's so much that goes into it. So I was a little annoyed with that. <laughs> yeah. What would you give it now? And what what did um, you give it the first time? I gave it a five the first time. I agree. I'd probably give it a four the first time, but I still recommend this book to people, but I do let them know like this does talk about domestic violence. And that's the, that's like one of the things that I think would knock me down a star to a four is because Colleen Hoover has mentioned that she doesn't want to put trigger warnings in her stories because they give away the plot. And I think she could have easily put that in here because the first source of domestic violence that we even see is her parents. So I don't think that would have necessarily given the plot away just because if they see the trigger warning and then the first incident that they see is like her parents, they're thinking that like, that's like the trigger warning. They're not, they're not really assuming that it's going to happen later on. Um, and yeah, so I think that's one of the reasons why I would knock it down a star. Um, the unrealisticness of it that I didn't catch the first time, but I did the second time. Yeah. The cheesiness that I, I don't know. Maybe it's just reading it again. And I was just kind of annoyed with the whole Alan thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I get it. I, I agree with you. I'd probably knock it down to a four. But again, I I do. I still love the book. It's just not really a five to me anymore. Yeah. So totally. 
yeah what about that uh movie they're coming out with what do you think of that (laughs) um yeah they released a couple um casting announcements that Blake Lively is going to play Lily and then Justin Baldoni is going to play Ryle yes I love Blake Lively I think she's Mm -hmm. an amazing actress I hope that they can make it work out with the age of the character and her age I think she looks incredibly young for her age she's not even that old <laughs> yeah i think all. she's 35 yeah or something and we're 28 yeah yeah so yeah i think she can do it um 23 might be pushing it a little bit i yeah. i wonder if like she's just gonna be older like in the movie like maybe lily's 28 you know true because i wonder too like when they do the flashbacks to when she's 15 because they're gonna have to show that right like that's a whole part of the story is like her we seeing like her and atlas build a relationship like blake lively's not going to play a 15 year old oh like, no. they would have to find like a younger actress to do that which they do that all the time i hope they have sadie sink i know she's so cute and she's yeah. a redhead so she'd be like perfect yeah she could even play the 23 year old honestly yeah because she's With a little probably makeup, 23 she yeah um justin baldoni i don't really know a lot about him um he is what i would have pictured for atlas though i definitely disagree with that <laughs> i do not think he's an atlas i think for ryle i don't i don't see him as any of the characters i think for ryle i really wish it would have been theo james but one thing i did want to mention about the age do you watch um outer banks no you don't okay i, I have to watch well it chase stokes is yes, i know who that is okay he's 30 and mm-hmm. he plays a 16 year old and oh. he pulls it off like completely so i mean i can i think they can pull it off i'm not like too worried about the age with it um but yeah i guess we'll see justin baldoni i don't i don't know him like in anything that i've seen Mm -hmm. i know he's in jane the virgin so and i never watched that i did watch a couple clips of it and it was i mean he's probably a good actor um but i just i cannot picture him as ryle i am so nervous for who they're gonna cast as atlas so nervous yeah there's a lot of pressure for yeah. this book there's a lot of people that really care about this i'm worried that she's literally just doing it because she wants like the big names and not like, well she literally said in her announcement she's like i i wanted blake lively to play this part so bad like she was like this is my perfect like pick and but she is the author so maybe yeah. that's who she pictured when she was writing and so we don't know that that's true but yeah i don't know we will see i'm very excited yeah i'm excited too um have you read anything else recently um i just finished listening to lessons in chemistry which is getting a lot of hype right now it's a newer book like it came out last year um it was really good and i was very impressed by like the narration too because a lot of times like that can make or break a story in my opinion um so loved the narrator and then the story itself was really good like the beginning starts out kind of rough i don't want to spoil anything but I was starting to question if it was going to be a happy book or not, (laughs) Um, but it was great. It got so good, and all the characters are so perfectly crafted. Like, even her dog has a point of view in it, and it's, like, golden. I just love it. so cute. I wish I could have that same reaction to the book I just read. Okay. (laughs) Why? It starts with us by Colleen Hoover. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It lacks a plot I feel like, like yeah it lacks a lot of things there's not a lot going on in there but spice not being one of them yes we might have to tear that apart a little bit on an episode on here sorry I'm not going to give you any spoilers for it maybe you've read it already maybe you agree with me maybe you think it was the best book you ever read I don't know that's okay <laughs> that's fine yeah no judgment here I just didn't like it <laughs> same yeah <laughs> well I think that's it the wrap on our first episode oh my god so exciting yeah we hope you loved it <laughs> yeah let us know you can comment on our instagram or the literary lounge mn same goes for tiktok we're also on youtube if you're watching on youtube then you know this the YouTube. um <laughs> but comment subscribe let us know what you thought and we'll see you next wednesday oh but what are we reading next week um, oh yeah um the cruel prince by holly black <laughs> yeah so stay tuned for that and then make sure you subscribe to this podcast too Mm -hmm. on whatever podcast channel you listen to yeah bye guys all right bye